Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Joy and Jerry, and uh, we're back again with you. Uh, well, I know we skipped a Sunday, but we were out of town and just couldn't get it all put together. But here we are back again today. And uh, today, today is, is the, I don't even know, 27th? I think it's, it is. It's August 27th. I remember church said August 27th. August, yeah, yeah, August 27th. Uh, I think 2023. I think we're still half asleep right now, but anyway. <laughs> anyway. Jerry's on new pills. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he has. We found out when he went for his um, follow-up. You know, we got a pacemaker back, what, a month ago. And we went to the follow-up appointment with the cardiologist and found out that we've also got, um, what do we have? You have... <laughs> A, a, a fib, a fib, a fib. Yeah. Atrial yeah, and so the doctor had to give him some pills, so we don't know um, if the pills are making him more sleepy or less sleepy or what. He's only been taking them for a couple days. So. I don't think it's the pills. Well, oh. showed, well, I don't care if he sleeps or not as long as he's breathing. <laughs> and don't, don't think, well, what about all those scriptures and about all those videos Jerry made on healing? Hey, we're on them. <laughs> we're on them. We're quoting them, we're praying them, we're standing on them, we're believing them. So, no matter if we're a hundred, we're going to believe God's going to keep us healthy until He decides it's our time to go home and be with Him. God never said that you would not have tribulation in this world. Yes. He said you will always have tribulation regardless. It is a sinful world that you live in, and it's full of stuff like this. And it matters not because we have the power and the authority of God behind us. Right. And if we do what he says to do, then everything will be okay. And that's the way I look at it. Yeah, he said, try me. Yeah. Try me. But you so, know, it's... We're trusting him. That's the best we can do. As long as you have a devil on this earth, he's going to try and take you down. It, 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 it doesn't matter how hard you try. You still got to face him, but you got to learn how to resist him. Resist him. The Bible says in John, resist him, and it won't make any difference. There's nothing you can do. He's always going to be there. It's just a big pain in the neck. It says, resist, resist him, and, and he will flee from you. He will flee. <laughs> so that's what you have to do. How do you resist him? You bind him. You rebuke him. You, you curse him. You like, tell him he has no right to be in your home, be in your body, be around your kids, be yeah. anywhere. And um, you just trust God to surround you with angels, good angels. And it tells you in Revelation how to overcome him. Yeah, yeah. There's two components to that. Blood One of the Lamb. is the shed blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, which was done 2,000 some odd years ago. And the word of your testimony, which is... Which is what we're you giving you know now. This by now. <laughs> the word of your testimony, which is the word of God. That's right. Related to whatever is coming against you. That's right. Yeah. God is bigger than anything the devil can throw at you. That's correct. And According that's to this, and this is what we, we run our lives and our beliefs by, is this. It is our people manual by... The creator of all people. That's true. All right, where are we, buddy boy? Well, we're still in Proverbs, obviously, but we're in Proverbs 24, uh, verse, I think it's 17, 17 through yeah. 34. We're continuing from where we left off in our last Shine video. Right. So I'll go ahead and read out the King James Version. Joy's reading out of the Living Bible, as you all should know by now. <laughs> 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 anyway, Bible. verse 17, this is kind of odd about this. It says, Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. I always thought that was... Mine's a little different there. Oh, I don't doubt that. Mine's a little different. Anyway... Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. Verse 21, it says, My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. For their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? 
These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse. Nations shall abhor him. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. Every man shall kiss his lips that giveth a right answer. Prepare thy work without, and make it fit for thyself in the field, and afterwards build thine house. Be not a witness against thy neighbor without cause, and deceive not with thy lips. Say not, I will do so to him as he hath done to me. I will render to the man according to his work. I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles, had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. Yeah, my daddy used to say that, a little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands, and so now we know where it is. So get In yourself out of bed and go to work. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to have to get Jerry to quit working so much. <laughs> He's not supposed to lift his pacemaker arm higher than to wash Children. his hair or something. And, uh, anyway. <laughs> anyway we'll I, I have to honestly respect all that because I certainly don't want to go back in the <laughs> hospital. <laughs> yes. So mine's a little easier to understand, as always. Proverbs 24, starting at verse 17. Do not rejoice when your enemy meets trouble. Let there be no gladness when he falls. For the Lord may be displeased with you and stop punishing him. Ouch. So the Lord, from, from this, well, we'll talk about it in a minute. Hopefully my brain will remember that thought. <laughs> Don't envy the wicked. Don't covet his riches. For the evil man has no future. His light will be snuffed out. My son, watch your step before the Lord and the king. And don't associate with radicals. For you will go down with them to sudden disaster. And who knows where it all will end. Here are some additional proverbs. It is wrong to sentence the poor and let the rich go free. He who says to the wicked, you are innocent, shall be cursed by many people of many nations. But blessings shall be showered on those who rebuke sin fearlessly. All right, something else to say about that. All right, we're up to 26. It is an honor to receive a frank reply. Develop your business first before building your house. Don't testify spitefully against an innocent neighbor. Why lie about him? Don't say, now I can pay him back for all his meanness to me. <laughs> I walked by the field of a certain lazy fellow and saw that it was overgrown with thorns and covered with weeds and its walls were broken down. Then, as I looked, I learned this lesson. A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, means that poverty will break in upon you, suddenly like a robber, and violently like a bandit. Ouch. Yeah, that is very, very true. And just like you read the last statement there, I think one of the travesties, well, not a travesty really because it's helped a lot of people, but the American Medicaid system, the American welfare yeah. system. Yeah, it's so abused. Was meant to be a blessing yeah. to those who were not able to work and those who were not able to do any physical labor, if they're handicapped or whatever, they have—they honestly have to be supported, honestly. But they're, 
There are so, so, there's many, 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 many more people who rely upon Medicaid simply yeah, because that it's can free. work. They're very healthy. And, and they can, can work. work. And so it takes away all of their ambition yeah. because they feel like, yeah, well, I don't they have, don't to, have work. to work. And if they do work, they'll lose their Medicaid. Their Medicaid, yeah. So, it, so I've heard people say it. You know, if I get a job, I'll lose this. If I get a job, I'll lose that. Yeah. Oh, there just needs to be also backwards. much more strict enforcement of what that is intended for and not what it is used for. And it appears to be getting worse. You know, there's over 50% of the American people depend upon the government for their income. Is that and, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It has for a long time. Unbelievable. And I'm not just talking about Social Security. Because Social Security is something we all have earned because we were That's forced. That's right. We're not talking about that. We were forced to take funds out of our paychecks. Right. To, it's our money. Always was. Yeah. Well, it was our. Yeah. And the government yeah. told us, "Well, no, it's supposed to be not, saved for us. We're going to do this for you. We're going to make sure that you yeah have a retirement. Have a retirement and all that, which is. And granted, there's a lot of people. My daddy hollered back then. It's just another tax. It's just another tax. It is, but. You know, there are a lot of people, if it weren't for Social Security, they wouldn't have anything. Oh, yeah, we sure like ours right now. But it all kind of goes back to the same premise that these people know that they've got Social Security coming, so why should I try to do anything different? Why should I learn about how to do something different to make more income, to do this, to do that, or whatever? Yeah. You know, uh, and the, the more to give, honestly, if you're going to live by God's Word, because that's how God gives you the power to obtain wealth, right. and it's by giving. Right. And if you don't have any money, just enough money barely to live on, there's no way you can give to anything. That's right. And that's not what God intended. Well, we're starting at the bottom, Bernhard. <laughs> I know we we are. need to go back up to the top because I figured out verse 17. Well, go. Let me hear what you All have right. To say. Here's the thing. Do not rejoice when your enemy meets trouble. Why is he meeting trouble? Let there be no gladness when he falls. Why is he falling? For the Lord may be displeased with you and stop punishing him. So the Lord's already dealing with him. Your job is to bless your enemies. Pray for your enemies. You want them to be saved. You want them to go to heaven when they die. And they're lost. And so your job is to pray for them. God's taking care of the punishment. It's not your job. It's God's job. That's how I see it now. What do you think? Well, that's true. That's a basic belief of God is revenge is mine, saith the Lord, not yours. Revenge is mine. Anybody that does you wrong or whatever, I don't, you know, it really makes you mad. You want to go over there and strangle them. You want to cause all kinds of problems for them. You know, no, 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 no. It says love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what God says. That's right. And bless your enemies. It's and bless your enemies do. and pray for your enemies so that they turn from their evil ways not pray revengeful things or try to do revengeful things. Right, because how will your enemy see any difference yeah. if you act just like he does? Yeah, You're just as bad as he is. Yeah. He's got to see the opposite. He's got to see the love of God. He's got to see the difference in a person's life who has Jesus as their Savior. So you can't go around acting like your enemy. <laughs> it starts with forgiveness, you know. Yeah. And that's one of the, that's a hard thing to do sometimes when somebody's really done you really bad. Really bad. But you've got to understand and go back to God's word, and He will bless you for that. You know, He says, "Vengeance is mine," saith the Lord, right. not yours, right. but it's mine. Right. And He will take care of that situation. You don't have to. So. Yes, uh, we just heard Pastor Hagee preach a week ago about mercy, and he said, "True story." A farmer, next to a farmer, two farmers, the one farmer had a little girl, the other farmer had a dog. Now they may have had more kids or whatever, but this is the basis of the story, okay? The other farm had a dog and the dog was vicious and everybody was scared of the dog. But the farmer who owned the dog wouldn't do anything about the dog. So it came to happen that the dog attacked the little girl and killed her. The little girl died from the dog attack and then the dog was killed. So everybody in the whole town, in the whole area, the whole community, hated that man with the dog. And 
when the next season came to plant the crops, the people that sold the seed and whatever you sell to these people so they can have a crop, they refused to sell him anything. Nobody would give him any seed or anything else. They just hated him because of his dog. The man, his, his field was just blank and he was going to starve to death. So the next door neighbor, the man whose daughter was killed, took a portion of his seed and went over in the night and planted part of that man's field. So the man wouldn't even know who did it. And the man's field grew and he had a crop and he didn't die. But he was talking about mercy, forgiveness, blessing your enemies, and that is a very good example of it. Yeah, that's an extreme example. Yeah. 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 So let's go to verse, um, that was 17 and 18, uh, 19 and 20. Don't envy the wicked. Don't covet his riches. For the evil man has no future. His light will be snuffed out. Now who's going to snuff it out? We're not. We were just told That's not right. to. We were told to bless him. That's, That's right. God's job That's again. God's job. Yeah. We got a lot of evil going on in the U.S. right now, and I'm just thanking God he's going to snuff it out. God doesn't need your help when it comes to taking care of stuff right. like that. You may think he does. But well, he you think you, you may need to tell him to get with it, you know. Let's not take so long. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm telling you, I need your glasses here. <laughs> oh. I'm not sure that's <laughs> scriptural. All right, then there's 21 and 22. Mine are kind of in chunks together. My son, watch your step before the Lord and the King, and don't associate with radicals, for you will go down with them, here it is again, to sudden disaster. Same thing. Don't do what they do. Don't act like they act, or you're going to get the same punishment they're going to get. Right. Okay? What's the next one, babe? Whether you believe it or not, God is still in control. It may not look like it, but he is. Yeah. And you just, all you have to do is love your neighbor as yourself, you know, and those type of things. 23, what's your say, babe? Uh, these things also belong to the wise. Uh, it is not good to have respective persons in judgment. Now, I'm not sure I tell Mine you. says it is wrong to sentence the poor and let the rich go free. Well. So? He who says to the wicked, you are innocent, shall be cursed by, oh my, and is our oh, yeah. U.S. full of that with the media and these people that are defending all of the wrongdoing, the crime, the bribery, mm -hmm. the treachery of certain people, and saying that this other man is doing what they're doing, and they're defending the man that should be <laughs> taken care of. Oh, oh, oh. Now, it doesn't say that, you know, they've still got to bless him and pray for him, but that, that's not what's happening. They're supporting all the evil that he's supporting, so they're in the same boat. And the Lord says, <laughs> He who says to the wicked, you are innocent, shall be cursed by many people of many nations, but blessing shall be showered on those who rebuke sin fearlessly. Well, that's my job. <laughs> A lot of people who know me will say, oh, she just thinks every my kids, she thinks everything's a sin. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> uh, Not everything, but some things definitely are. And I won't go into exactly what, since it involves my children. 27, it says, prepare thy work without and make it fit for thyself in the field, mm -hmm. and afterwards build thine house. Right. Now that's just talking about normal economics. Right, right, right. You know, don't build a house when you can't afford to. Yeah, don't build a house when you can't afford to. Don't buy a car you can't afford to. Right. Don't buy, don't you know, buy a house more expensive than you can afford. Yeah, so many ways. You know, you need to start like everybody should with what you have. Right. And don't spend the money you don't have. Right. You know, everybody has a mortgage on a home, almost, almost everyone when they start out. Right. It depends on how big the mortgage right. is and how big the house right. is, you know. If it takes more than you make, then you got the wrong yeah, house. Yeah, there's certain rules. You, you've got to have ways of taking care of that. Yeah. And this is why ever, so many people find themselves deep in debt 
And even though they make a lot of money sometimes, they get themselves yep. so deep in debt that they'll never see the light of day. Right. And it just destroys them. And so you have to prepare for those things, slowly but surely. You know, if you look back on your parents and their grandparents, the way they lived. Oh, yes. This is nothing compared to the way most people live. Oh, nowadays. yes. The little places that our grandparents had their children, yeah. no plumbing inside. Uh, it, just shot and have their babies and not go to a hospital and have a midwife or somebody. My grandma suffered terribly. She had 12 children, five of them died. And just itty bitty, and, you, and on your dad's property is this itty bitty little yellow brick place that supposedly his parents. One room house, oh. one room house. And how many kids they had, at least seven. Yeah, and that's where they were born and raised. Unbelievable. It was amazing. Okay, we're in verse 28 and 29. Don't testify spitefully against an innocent neighbor. Why lie about him? Don't say, now I can pay him back for all his meanness to me. There we go again. There Vengeance you go is mine, again. saith the Lord, not yours. Right. And this says he was innocent. Yeah. He you was know, innocent. he's being accused of something he didn't do. Yes, he did a bunch of stuff that was bad. But he's being accused of something he did not do. And so you can't testify saying, yeah, he did that, to get even with him for what he did. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Only God knows the truth. Right. You know, you may think you know the truth in a lot of cases, but you don't absolutely know the truth. No. Only God knows that. So that's why you leave all that to him. Yeah. And uh, go about your way. Uh, now we're at the lazy fellow. So no, we already well, talked about that. We started at the bottom. This is something we talked about a lot, but... <laughs> It's pretty obvious that oh. what God is saying here that, you know. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you're slothful and lazy and don't want to work, and the problem with people today is there are many other influences in their life that cause yeah, them to be little, that way. One of, them's called, one of them's called marijuana. How about the TV, yeah. their little game thing? Televisions. Mm. The little game things they play, Fentanyl. cell phones, cell phones. <laughs> <That's> another one. <laughs> There's so much you access. You know, our kids are graduating high school and college, you can't read and write. It's insane. They're, they're just playgrounds. They're just places for people to, you know, get involved with the wrong crowd. They get on drugs, they party, they drink, they, and they learn nothing. How many people do we know who have a college degree and can't get a job, can't do a job, have no skills? It's just crazy. We had people working for us who had college degrees, and they actually weren't like that. But it's like Jerry says, if you're going to go to college, get a degree that will help you get a good job and make you some money. Like, people take the, what do they have? Studies of Harry Potter oh, in college now? They're just crazy. Bad stories. choice. Bad choice. Yes, and, and so we had a couple of employees that had college degrees, but they were just in a a funky thing and they couldn't get a job doing whatever it was so we that, were really glad to have them they were smart young women <laughs> that's why God says pray for wisdom yeah pray for wisdom, wisdom is right. the thing yeah choosing your future is a I big mean, look big around you choice and, I mean yeah there's so many degrees that you can get in universities today that aren't worth five cents and they'll spend thousands and thousands of dollars to get those silver Yeah, we degrees. know somebody who got one in political science. Political science is one of them. He was driving a truck delivering candy bars to 7-Eleven stores, yeah. convenience stores, things like that, uh, and had a degree in political science. Yeah. What the heck is that even? <laughs> it's just, <laughs> yeah, you know, how, how do you make a living in some of these things people want to go into? When and there, there are a lot of really good degrees, but oh, yeah. you, you've got to have the capabilities of putting that to use wherever you live. I mean, there can be some really good degrees in chemical uh, engineering or things like that, but if you don't have companies yeah, yeah, that, close to you that then plan deal on with, moving, that deal with chemical engineering and stuff like yeah. that. You're going to have to move off somewhere, way out here, whatever. Yeah, Jerry's brother has a son. His name is Nathan, and he's a major, major brain. He's got a Ph.D., what, two or three of them. He's super, super brainy, and isn't in chemical engineering. Yeah. It's but... him and, and his wife, both. And so they had to leave Oklahoma and move to another state 
where they could use their degrees that they had, even as brilliant as they were. But they did endeavor yeah. to go do yeah. that. Yeah, so they, they both they have very good successful jobs now. Today. Right. But their job descriptions are very, very hard to yeah. just go out anywhere yeah. and get a job. Yeah. It's not like nursing or something yeah, like or that. Yeah, or teaching. Or teaching. Yeah. Well, especially nursing. Mm -hmm. I mean, nurses can go oh, anywhere oh. in the world. And that's find right. a job that's somewhere. Right. I mean, it's and they that's pay well. That's a really good career. But I mean, that's what I'm talking about. So. Right, right, right. Anyway. Okay. Now that we solved all the world's problems. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, I went to Expo and I met Shelby there. Hello, Shelby. <laughs> she said, "Don't you dare quit doing shine." <laughs> she told me that several times. So we're not going to quit, but we do miss a few Sundays, and we apologize for that. So I had lots of fun at Expo, and now we're getting Jerry well. I and mean, you can, it takes a lifetime, honestly, to learn everything there is in the Bible. Then you're probably not going to learn it all. Oh, know. yeah. The Bible says to meditate on it, dwell on it, study it, Day learn it, know it. It should just be second nature. And it should be in your heart, so when you need it, it rises up. There's a lot of things I remember are in the Bible, but I couldn't tell you chapter and verse. But yeah. thanks to the Internet nowadays, you can just say, where is such and such in the Bible? And it'll just pop right up. I Listen, just love that. God doesn't ask you for chapter and verse. All he wants to hear is his word. Yeah, but when you're teaching it, you ought to when know you're chapter teaching and it, verse. I agree. You I can't agree. just say, somewhere in there it says, know, by gotta, his stripes you are healed. You oh, really, that. where is it? Well, I don't know. It's gotta, in there somewhere. You have to prove that. But <laughs> when you get in the middle of a battle, like, for example, my battle with heart disease right now, which I didn't think I would ever have something I like know, that. I know. It's such a shock. You know, but I think what happened there was back in 2013, I had uh, lymphoma. And of course, I had six months of chemotherapy, which is really hard on your heart. And I think that's where some of this stuff arose from. Yeah. But my father had a heart condition too, but you know, some of that is hereditary, obviously. We don't know, but we know the healer of all diseases, and that's what matters now. And we've got to quit because we're probably too long again. <laughs> we've don't. got some errands we've got to run this <laughs> afternoon. So leave us a comment below. Tell us what you think. Tell us if you ha ever had a nasty neighbor. Boy, I have. Oh, we had some bad neighbors growing up when we were raising our kids and, and growing up. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. I wanted to go down and say, you must move. You and your teenage boy must move. You cannot live on our street. <laughs> yes, this teenage boy, well, teenager, oh, I don't know. They were probably 14, 13, 14. And my daughter decided to be friends with him. And they went into some neighbor's backyard and broke into their shed in the backyard. Oh, we were just shocked, horrified, so upset. Not our angel, not our perfect little angelic daughter. How could she ever do something like that? And it was that boy who'd been in all kinds of different problems and trouble. So yeah, we know, we know about neighbors, but we weren't very smart back then with the scriptures. We were just starting out and uh, learning it, and so. Just like everyone else. Yeah, I just wanted to tell his mother, you know, keep your son away from my daughter, I'm gonna shoot him. <laughs> I didn't have a gun then, though. Thank goodness. <laughs> Got one now. Okay, we love you guys. Notice she said not to start saying anything anymore. She what goes did into I another say? Store. She goes into another Well, that store. was the old joy. Yeah. I'm the new joy. You could have fooled me now. <laughs> what? I'm not mad at any neighbors anymore. No, I well, actually, we were. Yeah. We, we had we this we couple next mad. door for years and years and years, and we liked them a lot. But they had no one dog, Six not dogs. two dogs, not three dogs. They had seven dogs. Seven dogs, yeah. Oh, I had a girlfriend spend the night up here in this upstairs room one time, and she said, oh, those dogs barked all night. And I said, what dogs? She said, I guess they're next door to you. They just barked and barked. And Jerry and I had never heard them because we're downstairs on the other side of the house and we'd never heard them. But um, then they moved away, but then they came back. And then Jerry and I liked to be out at the RV and stay in the RV. And those dogs would just bark all the time. 
And I texted the man one time and said, is there anything you can do about your dogs? I'm trying to make a video. They're so loud. And Terry, every time Terry would step out on her porch, seven dogs. Arr, 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 arr. So yeah, we didn't like that. It wasn't that we didn't like the man and the woman. They actually were very nice people. Very hard workers, had a great business, took fabulous care of their lawn and their home. But oh, we really had an issue with those dogs. So that's a recent neighbor thing. But the Lord really blessed them and helped them build a brand new house somewhere and they have moved again. <laughs> so we just thank God <laughs> for that. Anyway, like Joy said about 10 minutes ago, we got to go. <laughs> You, we wish you guys have a Once I start week. talking, I think of so many stories. Oh, you really think right, so? Of course, you never do. <laughs> right. Anyway, Bless your husband. we got to run, guys. So <laughs> y'all have a blessed week, and uh, we'll be back with you again next Sunday. We will. Bye for now. Bye, guys.